I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper. I hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got another fun video with the Club Bear, and today we're talking about the map Atlantic. But before we begin, like, subscribe, up and low. Appreciate all the supporters of the channel. Let me know if well, we can do anything better. And as always, thank you guys for all the support at four th uh, the sorry at four thousand subs. We're gonna do another premium DD giveaway. Or, I'm sorry, just another premium giveaway. That'd be awesome. So we'll change it up a little bit. But as always, thank you guys for supporting the channel. Let's get to it about uh, clan battle strategy. I really enjoy doing this. A lot of you guys have got have brought in great input. A lot of um, uh, you know, especially since I focus on the destroyer role, I really enjoy uh, just playing with the destroyers. Today we're playing with the Club Bear on the map Atlantic, a very fun map, and it just it allows us to discuss some of the tips and strategies that we've seen out there, what we could do better, what we did wrong, learning from both aspects, uh, not, not only from our team, but from the other team as well, and what we could do better. So let's take a look at this one. This one is an interesting uh, setup because we actually have one destroyer on the other team. I've, I've seen a lot of teams actually begin with this kind of strategy. The, the pros is is you get more cruisers and that means more health points and more damage you can take as well as the ability to have extra heals or whatever those consumables may be that in this clan battle season as well as having extra additional radar or maybe you're doing a napoli kind of push or something with heavy cruiser support and it's very interesting now the negative side the cons i, I see is look you got one destroyer and you, against two destroyers which is one you have a two versus one aspect here which means that you could easily bully on this destroyer or if you lose that destroyer you knock out your eyes and ears and that just leaves the rest of your fleet as you can will see in this video rendered useless or helpless i'm sorry not useless but helpless in the sense of spotting maybe uh, twerping or holding off pushes and the destroyer like i said is the key component of the game I feel like the destroyer player is doing everything from capping, spotting, torping, gunboating, killing, destroying, everything smoking up, everything you can think of that makes this game great, it's doing, okay? So it's pretty awesome in that regard, but if you lose it, that is a major component uh, component of your strategy. You're going to see actually what actually turns out there. And the other negative side is the fact that, you know, you have to go cap, like I talked about, because m m most of the games are in the higher level leagues that I've seen, like Typhoon and um, Hurricane. Uh, you can see that a lot of it's stalemate. I mean, a lot of it's just kind of like Cold War style of gameplay where everybody's just holding off on the lines in the back or in the, whatever. And they're just kind of just waiting for points to tick up. And the, the major area that's of concern is the, the cap that it's, is the one that's contested. These caps that are near your spawn points are easy to hold. And the real, the biggest one that is the game changer is whoever has that additional cap to obviously um, tick up in points a little bit quicker if it's a stalemate, then the point, the person with the most points at the end of the day wins. And I've always said it's not about who holds, uh, gets the cap first. It's about who holds it and maintains it for the long run and, and who holds that survivability. So let's take a look at what the initial setup is right here. So we can see that we have uh, our setup. Our team is down here with two destroyers uh, compared to their one. And, of course, they have the normal uh, uh, setup where one destroyer, but they, they sacrifice one destroyer for another cruiser. And you're going to see how they actually position. So what I saw for our basic positioning is we're going to have both destroyers split it up and go and obviously cap um, the points right off the bat. Now I'm in a Kleber, so obviously the faster story needs to go to the one that's the furthest away, so I'm going to use the Kleber to go to Charlie, while the gearing is going to cap Bravo right off the bat, and then obviously then the strategy is for the club, uh, the gearing, I'm sorry, to go to the center and spot, giving you eyes and ears into Alpha right there. I mean, again, intelligence is a very key component of the game, especially without submarines and CVs, which I do deplore and I hate. But having a destroyer out in the middle does allow for a little bit of intelligence, and that's also a very good component of strategic warfare. Having that uh, eyes and ears to see and, and take the high ground is always a great component to military strategy. Of course, the cruiser is going to go, one cruiser we're going to have go into Bravo and maybe hold this gap right here. While we have another cruiser is going to go out to the flank and maybe just hold and keep them from flanking us, kind of giving that safety barrier. And of course, we're going to also have a uh, battleship go into the center. I'm sorry, we had too many. I, I, I misspoke here. One cruiser is going to go to the far uh, west here, I believe. I think this is what the strategy entailed. And then we had another battleship. Uh, in support as well, maybe just lingering around Bravo. Meanwhile, we had a, a cruiser pr support me at uh, Charlie. Another kind of cruiser kind of creep into the center here, a battleship kind of lingering in the center, just kind of giving fire support. And this is kind of the, how the map actually kind of uh, developed, and we kind of see where it, it, it plays out. And I forgot maybe there, I'll have to check the video again. I think one of the cruisers may have uh, continued to push on to Bravo to support that way, while only we needed one cruiser just to hold 
or, or one or two cruisers just to hold right here in the center. So that's kind of the basic strategy. Now, me as a destroyer pro, I think th this map actually turned out to be kind of a stalemate where we're just holding the line right here. So really what it took was for me to actually... Uh, make a difference here. I actually had to step up and cause some kind of a ruckus. And that's why I like the destroyer role, especially in a club air, the speed and the agility of it. Right here, we run off the bat. You're going to see the, the play develop. What actually turned out happening was, and, and we'll actually use the pieces to show you what actually uh, uh, developed. And let's see here. Let me so I can't back up here. Let's go ahead and delete this arrow so you can see better. Okay, so what actually turned out happening was the their destroyer, their Yu Yu Yang, actually went this direction. The uh, our friendly destroyer went there, and of course we had the Clebear going here. Now what happens is, and I like this matchup here because I'm not afraid of any destroyer in a Clebear. I mean, Clebear is just so powerful, especially in a Marceau. I can take on any de destroyer that I can think of because of the speed, the agility, the French armor saturation. So we take on this engagement back and forth right here. I'm going to have a little bit of cruiser support, I believe, right there. And then it's going to help me fire and use a radar to spot him. So uh, what I ended up happening is that Yu Yang, I took as much health as I could. That's another good destroyer player role is to take on as much of a health off of a destroyer as possible or even eliminate them altogether. And that eliminates the destroyer that plucks out their eyes and ears. And that's their only destroyer. So once that go, that Yu Yang goes... What actually in turn happening was me circling around the back here and I had to do something because what happened was we had a destroy a cruiser there, a cruiser here and a battleship right there. And as, essentially once we knocked off again, we knocked off one of their destroyer players uh, that gives us a little bit more free reign to roam around because now, now I'm not afraid of fast firing guns or something that could eliminate me eliminate me off the bat the other downside of yu yang is it doesn't have it has a deep water torpedo so it doesn't have the ability to hit destroyers with torpedoes so that's a downside right there so we're going to eliminate that destroyer and this is what actually the map kind of uh, turned out looking like right off the bat here so we're going to have i believe that i don't know i forgot where that uh, cruiser was at we had a cruiser out here a battleship out here and i believe one of the additional cruisers went out somewhere in the middle right here and of course the uh, destroyer was lingering around the center and just having this destroyer right here, or this cruiser right here and the battleship right here was just enough for us to have enough fire support to support Charlie. What happened is the Stalingrad and the, I believe a, a Petro kind of moved up in this position right here, and the battleship was right here. Now, this is a stalemate right here when you see the video, but what actually really, really kicked off the the, um, the downfall of the enemy team was, one, the destroyer going down, and me sneaking up behind and torping this uh, this the cruiser right here. Now the cruiser has to worry about, again, the, the guns of turret traverse of a cruiser is still fairly slow so it has to swing its guns to the back and then now its attention is focused to the north as well as to the south because we have two uh, opposing ends right here you know you have one here and one here if you have two of those now you're causing a kind of a, a crossfire um, that it really just throws off the enemy team's uh, thought and positioning. So what happens was, and I got a lucky torpedo and then what happens was, was I was torping this Stalingrad and he had forced him to move out of position and then we torped the battleship player right here. And then that gives us one. And then we torp. And then we again rush. Whoops. Then we come down and rush this. And again, I've never seen a YOLO being able to work in clan battles. But it actually just, I just saw an opportunity and I took it. And that risk is a good reward. So I went down here, eliminated that, uh, that that cruiser right there and we tried to get as much as we could and we got eliminated off the map right off the bat right there as well but it was a good exchange because we got we were able to take off two of their ships for one little measly destroyer and of course at the end of the day the destroyer my uh my cruiser player came up here and finished off this remaining uh this remaining um cruiser right there so we this is kind of how it actually ended up so we take the charlie cap nobody's left nobody enemies left there to cap we had a nice um i believe we had the battleship actually moving forward here to come and help take out that cruiser and of course the destroyer and players are right here and ever, eventually there is this push and this destroyer got eliminated so this is kind of what the end all result would look like now it's up to just player skill and aiming at this point enemy team just started uh, retreating at this point and there's nothing more they could have done and uh, that's how actually the uh, map ended. But you can see how just having the stalemate is frustrating sometimes in these higher leagues. But you got to be that destroyer player that if you are that destroyer player that really enjoys it, you can actually turn the tides of a battle just by uh, finding those opportunities and jumping upon it and seizing that moment and uh, capitalizing on it. And it really does make a uh, difference in the long run. So let's take a look at the video and see how it turns out. All right here, team. We are on the map Atlantic, and this is just kind of speeding up initial positioning as we talked about. Yeah, you know, we have gearing. Actually did not go cap. Actually went, uh, my bad. Actually went and spotted in the middle there. And we are now rushing Charlie Point, and our other three ships are going to Bravo. 
while we have about two ships and a destroyer with me as well. Now, I got RPF. Now, I've been running RPF a lot lately, so it gives me that first heads up. First look, first kill, situation awareness on the battlefield of where to keep my guns pointed. And I have an idea that the Yoyang is probably coming my way. Yep, we get spotted. Now, I like the Kleber. Uh, legendary upgrade allows us to be have a 6.2 detection, so we can uh, allow ourselves to be undetected for a little bit so we can get this initial engagement going on. You can see you're hitting the reload boost right there. The Kleber is still powerful and deadly and dangerous. And I don't believe the Yo Yang's guns are as powerful as they want to be. As you can see, Yo Yang is already disengaging and just doesn't want to have anything to do with this. Now he's also being radar. The downside of having this legendary upgrade is also the fact that my guns are really, really long when I don't have that reload booster. You can see up to that 10 second reload time frame. So, man, I don't know. It, it is a good balance about how you want to play the Colbert. I've noticed in higher leagues and clan battles, not about you, about your damage output, but more about your ability to stay alive, spot cap, provide your ships with support. And it's really more of a team aspect. And I had to learn that a little bit because I, I'm so used to going out there with my head cut off and just gunboating. And as you can see, it doesn't always work out the way I want. But any kind of little shot we can do right now on the Yoyang, you can see we took about 21,000 health off him right off the bat. Just seeing that much damage right there, uh, allowing us to do that kind of long-lasting damage because he doesn't have heals except for the consumables. And anything we can do right now will pay off in dividends. And boom, there it is. Mosfet is able to shoot and take out the Yang. Eyes and ears are gone for the enemy team. So, again, we have the advantage right there off the bat with two destroyers. There are none. So right here we're speeding up. Look at the positioning. And you can look at the, look at the mini-map right there. You can see that we've got the Napoli out west. We've got our destroyer and back in the center with a battleship and another score player. We have a Moscow and St. Vincent in the Charlie area, so we're not too worried. I think the enemy team is about to push and take over Charlie. So we're going to try and circle, and I, I think that, again, I'm anticipating what is the enemy going to do, and I, I, me thinking that maybe I can rush the back because I can do this in the club air. I have the speed, I have the maneuver, maneuverability, and I have the weapon systems to allow me to do things like this, and that is really devastating. Well, what you can do with the speed and the power of the club air, and it just catches the enemy off guard. Stalingrad guns were not facing us right off the bat now he's got to really readjust and rethink this but he's also getting shot at he has to make a quick minute decision as where do i want the guns to be facing in order to 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 handle this club air in the in the uh the rear here and we're doing this rear uh sneak attack and look at that we get some a couple torpedoes right off the bat yep we do and taken do we get another one we do there's twenty six thousand off him right there and he gets his back turret to fire and takes a lot of heals or a lot of health off of us right off uh to get a little bit of damage right there but you know what it's okay we have and he takes some of our mines as well a couple more mines right there again he was so focused on driving that he forgot and guess what we do here and boom splash one we take off of montana with a just random torpedo, I did not think that was going to happen. I mean, these torpedoes only go eight kilometers. For me to have a torpedo hit a Montana right there is just pure straight luck, and he just drove right into him. So, again, we're not going to let the Stalingrad get away. We're going to go ahead and reassess, and I'm thinking about maybe I can go in and cap Charlie to help my team out. But then I have this juicy opportunity right here. It's like, I could take out a Stalingrad and a Petro because we have torpedoes on both sides. They're on cooldown. I'm ready to go. Now, my mistake right here, I think, was I didn't launch them early enough because I was afraid I wouldn't get any on. And maybe because I didn't take a more of a right uh, aspect approach and use island cover on the right, that his guns were able to get a little bit better angle on me. I should have probably, in my, my defense here, I should have gone to the right and then swoop in, swooped in to the left. Uh, because right now I'm heading straight at him. I'm just too nervous. My heart's pumping. Man, this is the game. Gets your heart beating really fast, and I do enjoy that aspect of the thrill of this. And I was, man, I could get both of these guys. Now, I should have launched a little bit earlier and maybe um, avoided these shots right now. Petro is aiming at me. Stalingrad's aiming at me. Everybody's aiming at me. And boom, we take out the Stalingrad. I wish I had launched another set of torpedoes at the Petro, but unfortunately, that was my mistake. I didn't. Uh, I was not able to help my other Moscow out, but that would have changed the tie even faster. But we're going to speed it up, and you can see how the game actually turned out and uh, unfolded. Where Petro, all he can do is reverse into the cap. He can't cap because he's getting reset the whole time. Ohio, on the other end, is just being farmed to death. And it just really wasn't able... They're just in full retreat at this point, And he goes down. We'll go back to... The Charlie Cap allowing, see, taking out their stall already allowed our enemy team, to, or our friendly teams to have an advantage, number advantage, and we're not afraid of that now. Petro is just now going to basically do a YOLO ram on Moskva, while, meanwhile, Alpha Cap is being encircled and engulfed. We also had the St. Vincent, good communications here, seeing a broadside Petro just is able to take a quick shot and save our Moskva right about here. Here comes a shot, and boom, saves him from getting eliminated right off the bat, and that is the, uh, the wonderful attribute of having communication discord and 
communicating your fires and and so forth. So right now, we all we have left is the Napoli and the Nevsky. Just kind of a low uh, squishy uh, cruisers right there on the Nevsky, and then a very low health Napoli, which is still heavily armored. But you know what? This amount of fire, you just can't. It can only absorb so much right there, and he gets taken off the map. And then the final. Uh, image we'll see here is just uh, how you can farm a nap or a Nevsky here because it's just a light cruiser. Anybody can take a shot at it, take some damage, have fun. But that's kind of how that map unfolded and how using the speed, agility, and the, the uh, uh, utility of a Clubair uh, or a high fast speed boat, and especially having two destroyers in a map as opposed to one, can really offset and change the battlefield dynamic. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below what you think of what you've seen, any different strategies of the Atlantic or what we could do better, and uh, what you've seen, and what do you think, and your thoughts as well. Let's build a community, make a better place, and have fun doing it at the same time. So build will be at the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know, and as always, like, subscribe, up and below. Appreciate all the support at 4,000 subs. We're going to do another premium giveaway so hope you guys do well say hi when you see me out there and as always well, stay safe and have fun take care cheers failed the first time but we ran into fucking super unicorns beating our ass <laughs> ah me oh, they weren't super unicorns but they were pretty good players all right how about we take a quick uh, two minute piss break all right probably gonna